system and, and how our industry can evolve of, over the coming 12 months. And um, that that clarity is going to be really, really critical, not just for our local um, local entities, but also for you know those um, foreign direct in investment opportunities for overseas businesses looking at Australia. So I'll leave it there um, and, and I'm happy to answer any questions or, or you know, we can do that later, however you want to proceed. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Simon. Uh, that was uh, excellent. We, we had some, some problems hearing you uh, clearly. I think the, the voice was chopping a little bit. Um, but that was an uh, excellent uh, overview. If anyone has any questions, they can um, post in the uh, chat box. <clears throat> yes, um, uh, Professor Lee is right. I think towards the end, it got much clearer. Um, anyone got any questions? Uh, we have uh, a couple of minutes. Um, a lot of you have joined now recently. Um, Simon, uh, those of you who are unable to, to, to hear him clearly, um, this is Simon Callaghan, CEO of uh, Blockchain Australia. Um, yeah, Australia, very vibrant ecosystem of blockchain and digital assets. And uh, Simon is doing uh, some excellent work in this space. Um, if you have any questions, uh, about I have, uh, I have Simon. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, Simon. You mentioned uh, uh, sort of halfway through that you the importance of infrastructure. Um, could you could you sort of expand a little bit on how on how policy is affecting the the, the development of infrastructure in Australia? Yeah. Um, so there's. I, I mean, I don't want to be too rude about it but i i think there's a uh a, i guess a lack there's not a there's not the same amount of clarity say that exists in hong kong or singapore or uk or um europe for that matter um so we've taken i think a little bit more of a um let's sit back and see approach which um is beneficial in some aspects, but uh, has potential risks in others. Um, <clears throat> I think the, the big fear at the moment is if we're not going to, uh, if we're going to be, um, if we, we don't want to follow the US approach, I think that's the big fear, is, is if we don't, if, if we're not providing clear uh, guidance on how businesses should be operating. The last thing we want to do is then start enforcing actions against them uh, after the fact that we, you know, if we haven't provided clear guidance for the last five years, then you probably shouldn't be penalising people as a result. So I think that's probably the fear within the industry. Um, I don't think, that, I don't suspect that the government, uh, the current government or the former government have the intention of doing so. It's, it's just, I, I don't think that's uh, how any of them are going to operate uh, or any of our agencies are going to operate and I and I I think you know once we once we hear from uh, you know Treasury once there's there's um, the public um, the, the public submissions and consultation papers available I think that'll provide some certainty which will likely push into next year I would think before any um, any actual outcome from a regulatory perspective is, is going to is going to be enabled but I I would suspect if the digital currency exchange licensing model does get up and the custody model does licensing does get up then that will begin to you know build that bridge between tradfi and and you know potentially into DeFi, but in, into this space certainly from from a dce centralized dce perspective great thank you very much thank you very much thank you simon 